Hi guys, my name is Jeremy and welcome back to my channel. Now today's video is very special because I don't really do this kind of topic. I don't really talk about this kind of themes in my channel but I feel like I also want to share what I experience with other people because I know a lot of girls out there, a lot of Filipina girls and maybe other girls around the world, they want to marry a Japanese guy. Yeah, I think Japanese guys are good husbands. They can be good husbands if they want to, right? In this video, I am going to share like how I met my Japanese husband and how you can also easily meet a Japanese guy if you are interested to date and if you're interested to marry a Japanese guy. Because that's what I did. I have the experience so I can give you guys advice also on what to expect if you date a Japanese guy and if you marry a Japanese guy and move to Japan. And we are starting right now. Well, I already made a video about how I met my Japanese husband. So in that video, I detailed like our love story, um, how we met, how we dated, what were the processes that we had to go through to get married. And if you guys are interested to watch that video, so nandito yung link. So please click the link here. So in that video, I talked about how we dated, how long we dated, and um, what were the processes that we went through so I could move here to Japan. And in that video, I also shared a little bit about our private life here in Japan. So watch that video first and then come back to this video for more. If you already watched my very first video of how I met my Japanese husband, then you know that I was his English teacher, I was an online English teacher, and he was my student. Then things got interesting and we started talking to each other on a daily basis and then we started seeing each other and then fast forward 2019 I came to Japan and we got married in October 11 2019 um, I think we dated for one year and six months before we got married. Anyway, you want to meet a Japanese guy, you want to date a Japanese guy, and you want to marry a Japanese guy, right? And that's the reason you are watching this video. Well, you guys, it is not very easy. And in this video, I'm also going to tell you guys eight things that you should know before dating a Japanese guy and before you tie the knot and before you marry a Japanese guy. So here we go. Number one, and these are based on my personal experience, okay? Number one, you need to be independent from your husband. And when I say independent, you guys, I mean you have to be independent financially, of course, and also emotionally. Japanese people are very independent. It is rooted in their culture and also they want their women to be independent as well. So I remember back then when I was still dating my husband now, my boyfriend then, so he told me that I like you because you are very independent. You are very different from other Filipino women. And I'm like, yeah, I think so. I think I'm very independent. I'm also really strong-willed. <laughs> So when I say you have to be independent from your husband, because now, even if we are already married, there are things that I have to do by myself. I have to figure out by myself. And it is very difficult because I live in Japan, I don't speak Japanese, and whenever I have to read Japanese documents and things like that, these are all in Japanese. These are all in kanji. And there are times that my husband doesn't want to help me with these kind of things because he wants me to figure things out by myself okay because there are ways if you want to do something there are always ways Japanese people don't like it when you always ask for help with everything that you're doing no you have to figure things out by yourself first and if there is no other way if you cannot find a solution and you have already exhausted all 
possible solutions, that's when you ask for help, okay? Don't ask for help for everything that you're doing. Japanese men do not like that. They like independent women. Okay guys, number two, and this is very controversial, I know. I know I have to approach this matter very gently, okay? Um, guys, don't ask for money when you are still dating and especially when you are still in the early stage of your relationship. But of course, I am not telling you what to do. I think every couple is different. Every relationship is different. We are all different. But from my experience, I did not ask him for money when we were still dating and he didn't give me any money. So when I came to Japan in 2018 to visit him, I bought my plane ticket. I spent money for everything that I bought here in Japan, that I spent here in Japan. I didn't ask for help. And I think he liked that. I think he appreciated that. But of course, then again, I am not telling you how to do your business. I am not telling you how to run your relationship. You do you, I do me. Because in Japan, you have to take care of yourself. You have to pay for yourself. You have to pay for your own meal. You have to buy your own stuff. Even if now we are already married, I buy my own stuff and my husband buys his own stuff. I buy my own stuff with my own money. He buys his own stuff with his own money. And I like it like that and I have no problem with that. Number three, and every woman should know this and you guys should know this, don't waste your time on players. Yes, there are players. Everywhere, everywhere we go, there are players. Don't waste your time on them. Find a guy who is sincere, with sincere intentions, have self-respect and don't tolerate the players because the moment you tolerate these kind of men you are giving them reason to not respect you so don't go with this man don't consider this man unless it's what you're looking for number four and you should really know this if you want to date a Japanese guy or if you want to marry a Japanese guy and move to Japan now, when you go on dates, be prepared to split the bill. Now, not all Japanese guys would want you to split the bill, but in Japan, it is very common and couples always go on dates and then they split the bill. Luckily, I married a very generous Japanese guy and when we were still dating, yes, I didn't ask him money for anything and he didn't give me any money, but when we went on dates, he, yeah, he paid for everything. I didn't have to pay for meals and things like that. Now that we are already married yes he takes care of me and my son and he takes care of the household consider this before marrying a Japanese guy now, number five if you want to marry a Japanese guy and if you want to live in Japan you really have to learn how to adapt to the Japanese culture because the Japanese culture is very different from the Filipino culture it's really different Japanese culture is very different from the American culture it's also very different from the European culture like iba talaga ang culture ng Japan you guys so if you really want to marry a Japanese guy you really have to study the culture first and do your research about the differences so, so when you come to Japan you will not be surprised like surprise surprise like how I was surprised when I moved to Japan because like I mentioned before Japanese people are very independent they are very individualistic and also Japanese people are hard working and like when you meet people like when you meet your Japanese friends or something you have to make a schedule like a month or two months in advance like in Japan you just can't text someone out of a sudden or like if you're bored and you just say hey like I'm so bored today like do you want to hang out or something no no, you can't do that. You have to make a schedule in advance. Number six, and this is something that you really need to know first before dating a Japanese guy and before marrying a Japanese person. Japanese people are not very affectionate. They are not very sweet. Not in their culture. They are also not expressive. They won't really express to you how they really feel about you. But it doesn't mean that they don't love you. It doesn't mean that they don't care about you. They 
they do. It's just that it's not in their culture. It's not in their personality to say, I love you. In Japan, they don't really say, I love you. They sort of like say, I like you. And for them, if somebody says, I like you, that translates to, I love you, you know, and I want to be with you. I want to date you or something like that. So just a little culture difference there. Number seven, Japanese men and Japanese husbands can be very rigid and strict and they can have an unyielding attitude. Like my husband is very strict. My husband can be very rigid. Yes, and a lot of Japanese men are like that as what I've heard. They also have like high standards of their wives and they want their wives to be kind of like submissive. They don't like wives who are a little willful like me. Like I am very strong-willed and that's why probably my husband is like, you know, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And that's why we get into arguments sometimes because I'm a very independent woman. I am willful and I have my own own opinions and I'd like to stand up for my own opinions and for my own beliefs and I feel like in Japan most wives are sort of like submissive to their husbands and also like the husbands maybe they want their wives to follow like what they say I feel like in Japan they're sort of like traditional like that but I also feel like it is changing and also women are getting stronger <laughs> and Japanese women now are also getting more more willful and getting more opinionated in a good way all right in a good way and another thing is that Japanese men like their wives to observe good manners especially like when you go outside or when you meet their family and when you meet their friends they kind of like want you to behave in a certain way like how you should be behaving in a Japanese society and number eight, the Japanese people are a little detached from their families. So like sa Pilipinas, we are very family oriented, like napaka close natin with our, um, with our parents and with our nieces and nephew and aunts and grandmother and grandfathers. Basically everyone, we are close to our relatives, we are close to everyone, even if that person is like your second degree cousin or your third degree cousin, we have like this really close family ties. But in Japan, they're not like that. I'm not saying that they are not family oriented, they are. But in Japan, the idea of family is the nuclear family. It's just your wife and your kids. That's your family. That's your immediate family. So in Japan, when you meet like your mother or your grandfather or your aunt or your uncle, they usually reserve this for like special holidays like New Year's when they go home. They have like a long holiday. They have a like a long break from work. That's when they meet their family. And also when they do that, it has to be planned ahead. Dapat nakaplan nun na siya like months and months before. So, ganyan sa Japan. That is life in Japan. That is culture in Japan. And if you guys want to come to Japan, you are very welcome. If you want to marry a Japanese guy, please get to know that person well during the dating stage. While nagdi-date pa kayo, dapat talaga na you have to really know that person really well before you decide if you really want to marry that person and if you really want to come to Japan. But Japan is a beautiful country. Japan is a country with a lot of opportunities and the food here is good and the weather is good. There is spring, there is autumn, and there is winter. You can enjoy different sports in every season. I myself enjoy living in Japan. I have a son, we have a son, and he is one year old and two months now. And he's getting bigger, he's getting stronger, and we love him so much. And I see myself living here in Japan for the rest of my life, maybe because I have a son here, my family ako dito, my husband is here, I have a husband here in Japan, so I'll probably like grow old here, I'll um, retire here. Yeah, I'll probably die here too. <laughs> 
but let's not talk about that well you guys thank you so much and if you have questions please leave them down below and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel it is a good way to support free content on the internet and it will also help me create more videos like this and if you watch my videos please do not skip the ads because ads help me make more money so i can continue making videos like this you guys i also do live streaming every now and then and when i do live streaming you guys can also support me by sending me super chats um, super stickers and super thanks i really do need your support because i need to buy a new computer so i can edit my videos i also need a new smartphone for me to be able to continue editing and filming and thank you so much guys i appreciate it and i'll see you next time bye